electron affinity is kind of the opposite of ionization energy. In ionization energy, we were uh, removing electrons, right? We were looking at how much, how much energy does it cost for, to remove an electron, and now in electron affinity, we're capturing electrons. We're looking at the energy change uh, when you gain an electron. So some, some atoms are going to want to gain electrons, some are going to want to lose electrons, um, some don't want to do anything. So the noble gases here, they don't want to gain or lose an electron. So if you try to give them an electron, it's going to have a really high electron affinity. It's going to be endothermic. It's going to cost you energy. With something like fluorine, see fluorine has a, a, a negative electron affinity. So this is, it means it's, it's very exothermic. It actually lowers the energy, it releases energy when he gains an electron. And so in general, um, electron affinity is going to become more exothermic as you move across the periodic table. Uh, there's a lot of exceptions, there's a lot of uh, um, uh, discrepancies in, in, in that, so we can look at a few of those. Um, but really I want you to know that like fluorine, chlorine, these, the, the non-metals like to gain electrons um, and that the, uh, the metals like to lose electrons. If you remember that, that's fine. So uh, exothermic electron affinity for like halogens, noble gases don't want to do anything, um, and that's fine. So let's look at, oops, here we go. Trends. Um, all right, so discontinuities here. So if you look at between uh, beryllium and, and boron, so beryllium, if you look at the orbital diagram, it has two um, two s electrons that are in the the two s orbital, and it doesn't have any p electrons. So if he wants to gain electron uh, gain an electron, it's going to have to go in a p orbital, which would be higher in energy than the s orbital. So he would rather not do that. So that's why this has a a, a positive. Um, an endothermic electron affinity. It, it's not favorable for it to do that. Uh, same thing happens over here with nitrogen. Nitrogen has uh, three electrons in the 2p orbital. If he gains another electron, it would have to share an orbital with somebody else, and so he's going to have to flip its spin. There'll be some repulsion there. It would, it would rather not gain another electron. Alright, so that's electron affinity. Um, properties of metals and nonmetals. So uh, some of the trend you probably already know. We have nonmetals over here, right? Anything upstairs is a nonmetal. Anything downstairs is a metal. Um, so metallic character kind of increases in this direction, right, from right to left. So nonmetals over here, metals on that side. And then if you just pick uh, like this family here, you can see um, so nitrogen, phosphorus. Those are nonmetals. And then these guys are, are metalloids, right? They're on the steps and then you have a metal down here. So metallic pro properties increase as you move down the group as well. So this is the same trend as uh, atomic radius or size. Uh, increases down and increases over in that direction. We're going to do a lab where we will compare um, metallic character and we're going to compare it by, by looking at aluminum, um, sodium, and magnesium and reacting these with different types of acids. So we'll have a, a really weak acid, which is, is water. Water is actually neutral, and then a, um, a weak acid, acetic acid, and hydrochloric acid. And what we're going to find is that the stronger the metal is, the more metallic that metal is, um, the, the weaker acid can react with it, the weaker the acid needed to, to cause a reaction. So sodium will react in water. You put sodium in water and you get a big explosion. Um, it's that, that will just increase with the strength of the acid. If you put aluminum in water, nothing happens. It does not react. If you put aluminum in uh, acetic acid, it doesn't, it doesn't react. It's, go it's going to take like a strong acid in order to react with aluminum because it's, it's not a very strong metal. It's not a, it doesn't have a lot of metallic character. It's metal, but it's not, you know, compared to these other two, it's, it's like a weaker metal. So metallic strength is going to increase as you go over and, and down the group. So what are some properties of metals and, and non-metals? So some of these you probably already know, metals tend to be shiny, um, a lot of them are silver, they're malleable and ductile, so that means malleable means you can hammer it into sheets and ductile means you can draw it into wires, so you've seen, you've probably seen a lot of metallic um, you know, sheets, wires, whatever. Uh, they're good conductors of heat and electricity. Uh, most metal oxides are basic, they turn basic, so if you take a metal oxide and you put it in water, you get a metal hydroxide, and, and we know that these are, these are strong bases over here. So if you had a metal oxide and water, you get there. Sodium oxide and water, you get sodium hydroxide, which is a base. Same thing with calcium. Uh, Nonmetals, on the other hand, um, they're, they're, they tend to have various colors. Their solids are, uh, you can't hammer them into sheets, you can't draw them into wires. They tend to be very brittle. Uh, some are hard or some are soft, but they, they do crumble. Um, they're not very good conductors of heat and electricity. They're poor conductors. 
and they tend to form acidic solutions. So this is a metal, this is a non-metal oxide, right? Carbon's a non-metal with oxygen. That's a non-metal oxide. If you put that in water, uh, you get carbonic acid. This is an acid. Uh, if you same thing with phosphorus, and then you add to water here, you get uh, phosphoric acid. So when you put in uh, a non-metal oxide in, in water, you get an acid, a metal oxide in water, you get a base. Um, metals tend to give up electrons, right? They have really low ionization energy. It's easy for them to remove an electron and you form a cation. Non-metals like to gain electrons, um, so, so they'll, they'll form anions uh, because they have uh, very exothermic electron affinity. If they like to gain electrons. Metals like to lose electrons. Uh, so when they get together, when you take a metal and a non-metal, you form a compound. It tends to be ionic because it's because the metal is going to give up electrons. The non-metal is going to gain those electrons. You get an ionic compound. If you just had a compound made of non-metals, then you have a molecular compound. Um, metalloids, there's the ones that are on the stairs here, these purple ones, tend to have properties, some properties that are similar to metals, some properties are, are similar to non-metals. Um, so, for, for example, silicon is shiny like a metal, but it's brittle and it's a pretty poor conductor um, like a non-metal. Okay, so just to kind of recap here, um, these are your, your metals and your non-metals. So metals in group one, they like to form plus one ions, they like to give up one electron. These guys like to give up two electrons. Transition metals also give up electrons. Uh, and then non-metals, these guys like to gain an electron, these ones will gain two electrons, these like to become anions, these like to become cations. Metals have low, whoops, there we go, low ionization energy, so it's easy for them to form cations. Non-metals have very exothermic electron affinities, they like to gain electrons, so they're going to form anions. Um, yeah, atoms like to gain or lose electrons so that they have the same electron configuration as a noble gas.